Hi, everybody. So, if you hear tail wagging, bone chewing, general anxiety, my dog is right here. Jake's, Jake's here with us because it's super rainy outside. We're getting to that part of the year where it is um, cold and rainy and cloudy every single day here where I live. So, I had to crack out the ring light and then two other lights that I bought for bullet journaling, actually but I'm now using them for this because I am just hoping this lighting looks okay. So, yay! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my January to be read. TBR is what I meant to say. <laughs> so before we get into this TBR, which is a, a pretty good start to the year, I will say, humble brag um i actually want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video which of course you guys know the drill by now it is book of the month so book of the month is one of the subscription boxes that i have been subscribed to probably the longest on my channel it's also definitely my favorite out of all the ones i've tried and that is because they search through hundreds of books every single month so that you don't have to and they still bring you the most incredible new releases that are coming out for that month and even sometimes they have early releases so for example a lot of their Riley Sager books which y'all know is one of my all-time fave authors they come out about a month or so in advance with book of the month where you would have to normally wait you know that extra month to get it in the bookstore so that is a huge perk for me I absolutely love it but two of the biggest perks for sure are the price points so their subscription box is super super well priced considering the fact that you're getting adult new releases in hardback and not only that but if you happen to not absolutely love the service you're getting or the books you see you can skip that month without any kind of penalty at all and just save those credits for another month when you might see something that you really like or you can cancel without any issues as well which I really uh, I like that but I've never been in the market to cancel it because I have never had a month go by where I didn't love at least three of the books and I can say that honestly because I get the books that you're seeing here in my you know fancy b-roll footage but I also add on about three books to my own box that I purchase with my own credits because yes I'm working with book of the month but I still am subscribed and I still get books actively because I just genuinely love their service so much. One of the ones I'm really excited about that's actually on my TBR is Black Buck. I think it's gonna be such an interesting fiction novel and I'm very ready to just dive right on into it and luckily that's one of the add-ons this month, which is another thing that I really love is you can add on at least two books to your box every single month if you don't just want one of the, the big five that they pick you can add two more on and get an entire little TBR going just from book of the month really so as usual if you would like to check this out I will have all of the info down in the description below so you can definitely check that out and if you use the code new books you can get your first month for only $9.99 which y'all $9.99 for a hardback new adult release is just you can't beat it. You truly can't. So definitely make sure to check that out down below and thank you so so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video and without further ado let's get in to the stack of books I'm looking at right now. So one thing I really want to accomplish this year is I want to either finish series or start and finish series that I own and Honestly, 2021 is the year of reading books that I own and either completing series, catching up on series, or starting series that I was really excited about and maybe that excitement died down because I bought too many freaking new releases because I'm definitely going to try to cut back on buying so many new releases because honestly, I just don't need them. I, I, I literally just don't need them. So that is the goal and a lot of these are going to either be rereads of the first book so I can get to the second book. I have an arc in here that I'm super excited about which is a romance and I know that's weird if you if you know me at all. And then I have a couple sequels as well that I'd really like to get to that I read the first one in 2020. So let's just let's just get into it. Jake are we okay? 
Okay, he keeps checking out the lighting. He is not a fan. So the first one I have is Arch Enemies, which is the second book in the Renegades trilogy, I believe, by Marissa Meyer. This is the author that also wrote The Lunar Chronicles, which I will ride or die for The Lunar Chronicles. I absolutely love that series. It was the official first series I ever read as a person who was actually in the book community at that point, and it has a very special place in my heart. And I just love it. It's just, honestly, really good young adult fun lighthearted sci-fi definitely recommend this one honestly doesn't let me down at all it's the same exact vibe it is about superheroes so in this world we have the renegades who are the quote-unquote good guys or so we think and then we have the arch enemies i think that's what they're called i want to say that would make sense oh no the anarchists and they are the ones that are like against the renegades basically they're the villains and renegades are the good guys blah, blah 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 basically i just picture the avengers in place of every single renegade that's involved and then you know our marvel demon bad people as the anarchist but in the first book we have an anarchist who's going undercover to become part of the renegades to infiltrate, find out what actually happened to her family, what's going on, why she believes the renegades are like the reason that she is now an orphan, da 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 da, -da all this stuff. It's a really fun read. I recommend the audiobooks over everything else because when I first started to try to read Renegades, it was really dense writing, surprisingly so, or I, I maybe I just wasn't vibing with it because I did try to read it, I think. At either the beginning or like the peak of the pandemic I was like really freaking out in like July or August I think that's about the time that I read it I don't remember it was in the summer but I just I just could not get with the writing so I did it on audiobook and 100% recommend that because they've got two narrators which I love that because we have two perspectives we have the basically kind of like heir apparent to the renegades royalty duo power couple who is very gay and we very much stan and he's one of our points of view and then the other point of view is the anarchist girl who's trying to find out what the heck happened with her family and whatnot so having those two perspectives is great also that's a trope i really love is when someone's undercover and they start to fall for the person that they're supposed to actually be scoping out slash absolutely loathing so that's in here if you happen to enjoy that, which I very much do. Okay, so next up, I'm going with the whole sci-fi vibe still, and I want to pick up the Dazzling Heights. Oh my god, this is so shiny against these lights. I am so sorry. But this is by Catherine McGee. It is the second book in the Thousandth Floor series, which basically this is just like sci-fi gossip girl and i love it i believe this is also also this is also the author <laughs> my lisp really came through this is also the author who has written american royals and majesty which i'm currently reading and i'm loving so basically if you just want gossip girl in a book but written well because i read the first gossip girl and it was not it um Catherine McGee has got you. You can have royalty gossip girl, you can have sci-fi gossip girl, it's really up to you. But basically, the first book starts out with this girl falling off of the thousandth floor and then it goes back in time and then all of the like situations unfold that lead up to that same thing happening, which I absolutely love when TV shows do that, like the series be like the very beginning of the series will show the very end of the series and then it builds up to it and then you see finally how it unfolds and it's nothing like what you thought exactly what this book does so good so intriguing the writing style is so easy to read and just fly through it really genuinely reads like a gossip girl set in the future and I definitely, I definitely recommend. There's just enough point of views that feel like you're getting something new every couple chapters or so, but not to the point where they're overwhelming. So if you like multiple point of views, if you like sci-fi, if you like Gossip Girl, if you like contemporary things like Gossip Girl, but you want to get into sci-fi, this is, this is a series I'd recommend. There is a very weird plot line that is very Cassandra Clary in here. Clary, Jace, if you know what I'm talking about, second book. A whole moment that I try to block out and I still can't that's in here and it's weird it's real weird um but you know gotta do it for the drama I guess I guess so next up is a reread because I like to build in a couple rereads and I've been seeing a lot of fan art of this book one of my favorite books of all time I believe I read it first in 2019 
and I absolutely fell in love with it and I just I wish there was more I really do but that is Sorcery of Thorns I can't say enough good things about this I really can't so I absolutely adored An Enchantment of Ravens Mel if you're watching we're still friends I know you did it but give this one a try please everyone give this one a try I think it's so amazing we're following a girl who is a librarian and in this world the books in the library are monsters or have the ability to turn into monsters and they're ranked in levels so like I believe I obviously haven't read this in about two years but I believe the highest level is like a 10 or something and that means that the book is like been corrupted or whatever and their, her whole job is to either slay the books when they get too bad or to tame them so that they don't get bad and it's just a really cool concept but one day one of the books I believe is stolen and the main librarian is killed and I think she's even this one's kidnapped and then she works with a wizard basically to kind of figure out what the heck is going on and that wizard has a demon companion who is just that trio is amazing. So we have Elizabeth, who is the librarian, and then we have Nathaniel, who is the wizard, and then we have Silas, I believe, who is the demon, and he is just... I cried in this book. Also, this was a, like... I read this at an awful time, <laughs> honestly, so maybe I was just looking for like a time to cry, but... I think I would still cry because sometimes I still tear up thinking about what happens. So I think it's just a really good book and I recommend and I am very excited to get to read it again. Next up is one that I haven't read. I haven't heard anything about this book. I haven't seen anyone talking about it. The only thing I've seen talked about is how beautiful the Illumicrate edition is, which true. Um, but that is the Court of Miracles. I think I just chose like the shiniest books to film with today, which I'm sorry because artificial lighting makes it look even shinier. But anyways, that's fine. It's still beautiful to be honest. Like I think this is one of the prettiest books I own. All I know about this is it is Les Mis in a fantasy setting. So I just finished reading two books in a series that is Les Mis in space and now I'm gonna go Les Mis in fantasy because apparently I really like the idea of of Les Mis, I just don't care about that movie. And I that's a lot. I know that's a lot because Anne Hathaway and Hugh Jackman are in it. So technically I should be all over it, but I'm like all around it. I, I will go anywhere else, anywhere else. So hopefully I'll like this to get my Les Mis fix. Then we have the contemporary that I was talking about. I got an arc of this. It does come out in February, so obviously I want to read it in January, but that is Honey Girl. And what I've heard of this is that basically Basically, this girl goes to Vegas and ends up marrying a girl when she's drunk and then has to kind of figure all of that out, which sounds like an amazing rom-com movie plot, which means that I definitely want it in my life as a book. So very much excited to have this. Now we have another reread. So this part is the reread, and that is Serpent and Dove. Already read this, if y'all don't know what it is. Basically, the long story short, it is a witch who has to marry a witch hunter for, let's be honest here, the lamest reason ever. But I don't care. Like, I wasn't looking for a good reason. I didn't need it to be, like, cryptic and well thought out and, like, really intense and integral to the plot. I mean, literally, it's just to uphold, like, societal standards at that point because I think she, like, fell into his arms and they're like, you better put a ring on it or you're a ho. Oh. So... <laughs> That's what this is about. And I I really liked it. I thought it was a good time. So listen, I mean, also though it does have Sarah J Mass blurbing on the cover, so I'm gonna like it because I love Sarah J Mass. But yeah, I think I, I thought it was fun. So if you've been questioning if you should pick it up, this is your sign, you should pick it up. And then next up, I want to finally read Blood and Honey. I have the gorgeous matching edition from Fairy Loot and I just, I just need to read it, honestly. But let's talk for a second about some interesting stuff I found out from Book Talk. Book Talk brought it to my attention. I knew this when the book first came out because I I deep dive everything I'm interested in. And I just, I found, I stumbled across it on Goodreads, honestly. I didn't like unearth this information. I found someone who had on Goodreads. And Book Talk like awakened a repressed memory of this information, I guess. But um, this was a Matthias and Nina fanfic on Wattpad before it was published, which makes a lot of sense as to why I love this book so much. Um, no spoilers for Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, but we were robbed. And so I 
now it, it makes sense why I like this so much. It really does. So if you were looking for anything like that, here you go. Here is your sign. Go forth. Next up are two huge tomes, but really they're omnibuses of a series that I love. I love Elise Kova. She's one of my favorite, like, I think, I think she's classified as an indie author, but she's one of the ones that pretty much every time she publishes something, I'm like, yep, let me keep my eye on that because I just enjoy it, but I have to be in the mood for really fast paced, intense fantasy. And so Air Awakens is a series I'd like to complete. I've read, how many are in here? So it's all five. I've read the first three and I've started the fourth, but I don't remember now all of the first three. So I just want to reread those really fast, finish the fourth, and then finally pick up and finish the fifth book. This is about a girl who, good lord, I think she's also in a library. It's, it's been a minute since I've read this, but she works in a library and a prince of her kingdom comes home and she has to rush to go heal him. And then they are like, it's a story about them falling in love. Honestly, this is more of a fantasy romance, but what I like about Elise Kova is she tends to write fantasy romance. I would depict it as that, but she really focuses on the plot and the magic system a lot more than the other fantasy romance I have read before. So that's why I'm very partial to hers and I really like her writing and her books a lot because it has that fantasy romance element that I do like sometimes, but if I'm getting bored of it, there's other things to look forward to in the book. So yeah, this one is, this one is just a really good fast fantasy for sure. And then next up in me wanting to, honestly, one of my 2021 goals is probably to catch up on all of Elise Kova's backlist, which is a lot, but I also have the Vortex Chronicles, which is another omnibus. I don't know how many are in this one though, but I would assume it's five. It is five. And I think that this is just the, this is either after what happens in Air Awakens or before, but I'm gonna assume after because everyone says to read Air Awakens before you read this one. I looked it up on Goodreads, so that would make sense. But yeah, also this. So there are some other books that I wanna read, but they are on my, like, on my radar shelf, so now we're gonna have to switch to me showing you the pictures of the books. But the first one is The Rage of Dragons. This one is the Buddy Reads a Latte pick for the month of January. I have the first three for 2021 up on my Instagram if you wanna check it out. I'm gonna start announcing them in threes so that everyone has more time to get the book if they wanna read it or not. But this one is a adult fantasy. It has dragons involved. It's a revenge fantasy, I think, which is super exciting. I really like those. I like I like stories of revenge, and I really like stories of like a villain origin story. I just think that those are really interesting and they're really fun to read. So I'm very excited to get to this one. And then on the same note as Buddy Reads, I am also going to be starting and hopefully finishing this year. I mean, I will be finishing, but it'll be in June. The Truly Devious series, and I'm going to be reading Truly Devious, the first book, again, for my Patreon Buddy Read, which is so exciting because I absolutely adored this. And just like with the Buddy Reads a Latte, I will have my Patreon Buddy Picks picked out actually until June. So if you go on my Patreon, which is linked down below, you can see it. It's that one post is public to everyone so that everyone can see those picks in case you want to join for a certain month when we're reading it because I will be doing a specific vlog for the book as well as a journaling review that is Patreon exclusive. But other than that, those are the buddy reads that I have going on for this month. And yeah, I think I'm going to call it good there on the TBR just so that I don't get too overwhelmed with everything going on because I could very easily put a bunch of books on this TBR. I really could. But I have a Winter Wayne TBR that will be going up on its own, which is also obviously in January. But I'm just going to have its own video because it's just easier that way and keeps it more organized. And I already filmed it, so main reason why. But if it is up before this one goes up, then I will link it down below. If not, it'll pop up at some point, won't it? Hopefully. We'll see. But thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. And thank you so much to you guys for watching and making it this far. If you want an emoji, I don't know why the pigeon emoji, like the bird, the bird <laughs> pigeon popped into my head, but I'm going to go with it. I love 
pigeons. Honestly, did you know they were bred to be our friends? I didn't know that, but now it makes me sad because everyone treats them like flying rats, so we should be nicer to pigeons, and also we should use that emoji for this video. And definitely comment down below what you're going to be reading. That's my favorite part of TBR videos is I like to discuss books that I'm interested in, but I also like finding out what other people are reading because then I can ruin my TBR. And y'all make it easier to do because you always have amazing taste in books. So, yes. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are, and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye!